Canadian female powerlifter April Hutchinson has been suspended from the sport for two years for taking a speaking, uh, well, speaking out actually on this show about trans athletes competing in the sport. The Canadian powerlifting union used comments she made against her rival, transgender record breaking powerlifter Anne Andres, right here on Uncensored as part of the reasoning for the suspension. Here's what she said that apparently was so awful. So he is a 40-year-old, 6-foot, 250-pound man. Well, that national record that he broke, athletes have been chasing that for years. So it just goes to show the advantages, the physiological advantages that a male has over a female. Well, April joins me now. Well, April, first of all, I'm appalled that you've been suspended. And I'm even more appalled that you've been suspended for stating what appears to be a simple fact. You were talking about the fact that a biological male who identifies now as a woman and is a trans athlete um, was getting an unfair advantage because of their physiology over you. For stating the bleeding obvious, you're the one now who can't compete. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I guess saying uh, truth and fact, calling... Uh... Andres, a biological male, is considered hate speech and goes against their social media um, code. Um, when talking about sports, Pierce, you would know this, you have to state what the person is. So I, I was actually thinking I was being polite saying a biological male, um, and I was, in fact, saying the truth. So uh, bodies play sports, not identities. So when we're talking about sports, especially powerlifting, a strength sport, you need to say, call a man a man, call a woman a woman. Right, because physiology, I'm afraid, is physiology. There's nothing to get away from it. Um, it just seems completely ridiculous to me that for calling this out, this, this shocking unfairness towards women born with female bodies in women's sport, you can now not compete. I mean, it's, it, how do you feel about this? <laughs> I'm actually, I mean, this was a week ago that I found out. Um, I was sitting there on the couch. I opened the email from the ethics committee. I was blown away. Two-year suspension is very harsh. It's, a, it's a, a suspension you would give someone that got caught for doping, put it that way. So, I mean, everyone's still shocked about it. I'm, I'm very upset. I'm very hurt by my federation. And I do feel that this suspension was issued, let alone focusing on my terminology to deviate from the real topic at hand, which is unfairness in sports. Yeah, I mean, you know, I saw Megan Rapino, the football player, soccer, of course, over in America, um, who has just retired. And right at the moment of her retirement, she said, oh, what I'd really want is to see trans uh, women playing in the uh, US women's national soccer team, which is great because it means her plays won't get taken. And my response would be, OK, so what happens if Lionel Messi, who's playing in the MLS in America, what happens if he decides to identify as a woman? A, he can, if he wants to. B, there'd be no law against him prohibiting him from playing for the American women's national team. Is that the way we're going to go? Where Lionel Messi suddenly says, I'm a woman, and breaks even more records, but makes it irrevocably impossible for an actual woman to compete... Um, that is where this is going if we're not very careful, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's true. And you said it, uh, Pierce. Uh, it doesn't affect Rapino anymore. So have fun virtual singling. You know, that's mm. exactly what she's doing. Um, it if, like for my sport, it affects many lifters. I know four lifters off the top of my head that will be competing against Anne coming up and that have a problem with it, that have actually written the Federation two people have dropped out. One person cut weight so they don't have to compete against Anne. It's not consensual. And, I mean, it only takes one person to not consent. And the federations that are allowing this, you know, it's, it's disgraceful. It is disgusting that they're allowing this to happen. Yeah, I mean, it's basically licensed cheating is what it is. And it's like saying that certain comp competitors can dope. You know, if that was the case, everyone would be up in arms and saying, well, it's unfair because you get an advantage. This is unfair. You get an advantage. I mean, there's another story over here which I know you're aware of, um, which has really just staggered me, a health charity in the UK that helps women specifically suffering from endometriosis, which is a, a condition about the lining of a womb, has now appointed as its chief executive a trans woman, so a biological male. What do you think of that? 
I, I heard that and I mean, what a huge insult to women. You know, I went for a test the other day, I went for my first mammogram and, you know, I was just sitting there thinking like, how would I feel if there was a, a man in there with me? Um, you know, it's, it's a very private issue. Um, even just going into locker rooms, women are very private. Like I'm always covering myself up and that's in front of women. So you take something like so private, like a health condition and you and appoint a man in, in charge, a, a huge slap to women's faces. Yeah, it's, it's nuts, isn't it? Um, April, are you going to appeal against your suspension? Yeah, so the first step, I have a great lawyer. Um, uh, Lisa Bildy is my lawyer. We will be appealing it. We do have 10 days. And then after that, we will be pursuing other legal avenues, which I can't announce right now, but uh, we will be uh, seeking legal action.